I think listening to a text is work. I think hearing what it might say is sometimes the result of that work and sometimes the result of the work in combination with grace. Uh, I, I, think, I think texts, I think one must approach them uh, as places of potential um, surprise. Uh, we can't assume what we might find there. Uh, we might be very shocked at what might be spoken to us and also what might be said to us before we ever speak to the congregation. I, I think that listening is something also that happens over a period of time to skid in at Saturday night, midnight, it is not a time when listening is going to happen. It's when something is going to be thrown together. And I encourage students to spend a lot of time reading a text out loud, reading it silently, just living with the text for as much time as they can in advance of actually sitting down and starting to draw conclusions about it or working on it exegetically or working on it uh, in other ways. And one of the things that's been helpful has come from the field of listening itself. Uh, a guy named Andy Wolven and uh, a woman named Carolyn Coakley are uh, scholars in the field of listening. And they're at the University of Maryland, or Andy is at the University of Maryland. And the research in the field of listening itself has identified some very key areas that people can be taught to listen for. So I share some of the listening theory that's been developed and that's being taught in colleges and universities. So students also have the additional benefit <clears throat> of what, what does listening mean? And Woven and Coakley identify five different types of listening, of which only one would be the so-called pastoral. There are other types of listening, critical, uh, discriminative, appreciative. I mean, there are all sorts of kinds of listenings. And so in my own thinking about the text and listening to the text, I try to bring what I've learned from the, the field of listening theory as well.